What's up, everybody? Today we are going to talk about Witch King. I'm going to give you the best build possible for him. I'm going to show you some reports, tell you what gear that I would use. So stick around. Let's get it. Welcome back to CO Gaming, and today we got an exciting one. We are going to talk about Witch King. Favorite commander on this game, probably the most exciting to play, and I'm going to break down what is so good about him, what makes the Witch King by far the most overpowered commander in this game. Like, he is just legit just smashes everything that he touches so let's get into this build so to start with the most important skill that the witch king has the tree that everybody wants is a respect three tree it's ring wraith as of all nazgul's on this game like just you should be trading in ring wraith use your skills wisely this is the best tree for any nazgul on this game especially for the witch king so we're going to put all 15 points here it just you know it ups that burn poison and focus damage then we will go to nazgul screech and this is as any stun skill does Flicks focus damage, 100% chance of inflicting stun. Probably the most important skill you can actually have on Witch King. And it's one of the skills that makes him just so overpowered. That stun causes so many issues for so many other commanders. After you put those 7 points in that, go and throw your 7 points into more gold poison. It's just... There's other options you could do with this, but it truly is the simplest. Once you have this tree done, let's go down here to Black Captain and put your 15 points there and increases the damage dealt by Urukai, Evil Men, and Trolls. Uh, trolls are going to be irrelevant. We're not going to run Trolls at all with this build. Then put your 7 points into Convener, which is follow-up and gives you initiative. Initiative allows you be, to be the first person to attack, which is that's that is money with how much damage you do with this build after you put your seven points in that tree then you're going to come over here and do morgul commander it gives you a damage reduction for orcs and orca less damage always a good thing uh, whatever points you have left after this you would put into lord of the nazgul just kind of gives you some extra you know, some some damage reduction um, causes the enemy commander to do less damage. So just kind of put your points there. The respect five tree, if you have respect five, really isn't worth it. It isn't worth noting the fell beast. Like I mean, I've seen a few builds that use fell beast that work out pretty good, but this, in my opinion, is the best build for a witch king. Uh, as far as your gear goes, uh, as you can tell, I'm running all gold gear, but it will be kind of the same premises. This is not the best weapon for Witch King by far. Uh, it is a good weapon. If you have it, you can use it. But this weapon right here is going to be the best weapon for Witch King. Technically, this one right here is the one that I would use and I will be using here pretty soon. Uh, as far as your chest piece goes, you can go with something like this. Uh, I find this this chest piece works really good. I'm sure there's some some chest pieces out there that work better or as good. I think it's you know as I say in every video, personal preference when it comes to your gear and your troops. Uh, the helmet that I would run would be something around this. Also, another option, as a friend has showed me here recently, the bone mask that deals madness, causes and inflicts madness. Uh, that is actually a pretty crazy setup with that bone mask. Uh, 
It's actually the only fight that I physically lost without attacking four, three or four commanders ahead of this without reinforcing with my Witch King was to him and he absolutely wrecked me on inflicting madness with a bone mass. So something to keep in mind if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, it's definitely, it definitely works. Like there is no doubt about it. It most certainly works without a shadow of a doubt. As far as your pocket item, once again, can might focus. Everything should have might on it. There are several different options you can run with this. Uh, I personally like having that heal for all of my melee units each round. But, yeah, I mean, you could all honestly go with something like this that gives melee damage dealt. But you are going to reduce your might a little bit and add a little bit more focus. Uh... I mean, there's there's so many options. Like, you can't really go wrong. It's all what you want to do. Do you want to heal? Do you want to try to buff your damage? Do you want to do several different things that is possible to put in this slot? Um, I usually don't do gold gear shows, but it's it's the same same concept as far as purple gear you know you're going to use the same things your your might is your focus he is a might commander having some focus is going to to help you but every primary stat every piece of equipment should be might focused uh should buff your melee and should if possible help orcs or orca uh, that's that's going to be your primary troops, and I guess technically evil men as well, uh, with running corsairs. So like it's the same premises. It don't matter if it's purple or if it's gold. You're, you're going to stack might. You're going to buff orcs, orcas, evil men, and they're all going to be melee. So uh, same concept, all works. So let's go jump over, take a look at the troop compensation. Well, pretty simple. Alchemist, Alchemist, Corsairs, and Reapers. Uh, I think you're crazy if you run anything else. I, I see absolutely no point. I have found after trying many different ways to run these three troops that 3,500 Alchemist, 2,500 Corsairs, 2,000 Reapers is pretty much that sweet spot like I, I i lose more troops if i run less alchemist uh i seem to lose more troops if i run more alchemist and i take more damage if i run more alchemist so this is kind of the the money build in my opinion uh i'm not running a t4 nor do i need to run a t4 on witch king like he is a beast no matter what you do uh, I don't think you can just, you, you can't go wrong with a Respect 3 Witch King. Like, he is overpowered, he is the best commander in the game, and I will argue with anybody who says he is not. Uh, outside of that, like, I can show you some some quick reports real quick uh, of some, some more recent fights. Let me scroll down. And this was a four fight segment that i had did but the first fight was of course against the dwallin fighting erebor uh dwallins are probably outside of gilgalad is probably the second best counter in the game for a witch king all because of the dwarven units um as you can tell still pretty one-sided and a Gandalf the Grey. We all know what Gandalf does. Gandalf heals. Still a pretty one-sided fight. That was a second hit with no reinforcements. Then we go into the third hit against a pretty good Gimli. A uh, little bit more damage taken. But still, you know, maintained being able to beat a fully loaded Gimli. And then the fourth attack ran into a Theoden. I mean, no reinforcements. A good Theoden, like, you know, there's not a whole lot you're going to do with that. But still did pretty good damage for being a fourth straight attack within seconds of each other. So definitely a a crazy build. Uh, the best build in the game for Witch King. Like, you, you shouldn't consider doing anything else. Uh, gear composition, it don't really make a difference, honestly. Uh, might, 
Mike, Mike, melee, damage, damage received, orcs, orca. That's all you need to know. So, with that being said, let's uh, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and I will see you next time. See you out. <laughs>